Hey, folks, welcome to InTheMoneyStocks.com's intraday analysis video brought to you by the creators of proprietary price, pattern, and time methodology. Learn the PPT strategies and profit for life. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at In The Money Stocks. Dot com. All right, into the intraday action we go today on this Wednesday, January 8th, 2014. It is about 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time. The Fed minutes have just been released. You can see the surge in volume here on the chart right down here when those minutes were released. You did get a little bit of selling as the comments that came out of the last meeting were very, very hawkish on continuing to print money. Uh, many people wanted to remove more money. Many of the Fed presidents wanted to remove more money from QE than they did. They did $10 billion in December. Uh, many wanted to do much, much more. But the key is, ultimately, they didn't, and the markets are still in the happy place. And again, the economy seems to be doing well with the ADP private sector numbers this morning. And therefore, yes, the market sold off a little bit off those highs, but we're still not down much, if at all. Right now, S&P down a point and a half, Dow down 84, NASDAQ is up about 11 on the day. Now, again, a couple things to watch. See this trend line, this blue trend line? All right, see how, how many times we've hit this level in the last day? This is a humongous level. I mean, this is really, if you look at this and just call a spade a spade here, you have a bullish consolidation pattern. Now, I'm not personally buying it to the long side just because I'm fearful it could fail. And if it fails, you see big downside. Failed patterns result in big moves in the opposite direction. In this case, a failed pattern would uh, result in a down move. So it is something to watch because if we do break above it, then you have another leg to the upside. Another leg to the upside would take us first stop to about the 184 level on the spiders. And a second leg would take us back to the 184, 60, 65 area, which is the all-time highs. But again, based on the fact that we hit this many times and didn't break through, there is a chance we fail. And failure could actually see this market not only heading to the lows of the day here, but possibly even all the way down to the 182.35 level, which was a previous gap fill going back to earlier in this week. So this is Monday's close here. And again, here's Tuesday and Wednesday today, which is that day. And if we see some breakdown action here, you could actually go all the way back to this level, which would be a pretty big drop uh, from the day's sessions highs of today. Okay, so just some different odds and ends that I'm paying attention to. Right now, markets are pushing back up. They're trying to save this. The 200's keeping support here. You have resistance right up here. This market is trying. It is trying to hold. The big question is, can it? All right, a couple little odds and ends to go over. We made some great swing trade um, closing positions today. I want to briefly go over them. Number one, if you were a member of the Research Center, you banked at least 40% on ABIO. I repeat, ABIO, a 40% gainer today. We moved out of this position today around $2.20. That was from an entry of $1.53. Awesome profits on ABIO. All right, just think about that. We held it since, I think, uh, December 17th. So about three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, 40% plus profit. All right, we covered our Twitter. All right, our Twitter short today covered it. And ultimately, you can see right here, the stock has reversed back a little bit towards the flat line. We moved out at 58.35 from a short at 70, 70.35, 12 dollar gain on the short side on Twitter. All right, so members are just packing in the returns today. 2014. Just think about this. Just today alone, members basically made almost 60% if you add the two winners together. Think about that. All right, we've also had winners earlier in the year as well for some good percentage winner status. So, you know, just it's just already starting out to be an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, year in 2014 for Research Center Swing Trading members. All right, in any case, going over a couple charts, I told you guys Apple was bullish. All right, I said to you guys, as long as Apple closes above this key line and does not close below, Apple is bullish off this level. Today, Apple is up about $4.25. So nice move on Apple here. You can see it uh, opened below a couple days ago, bounced up. Then yesterday, it closed just on or above the line. And today, up it goes about $4. So nice gains there. Some of the members took that trade as well. Uh, we're seeing a down move in gold. I think gold deserves to be mentioned <clears throat> because... 
If it gets a little bit lower, I am looking at an entry on the long side. Just to reiterate, the level ideally would be this gap fill. Uh, I may even enter a little bit above it, but if you're a Research Center member, you will get that trade alert when I do enter it. All right, you'll get it live as I will post it, and sure enough, this level right down here is definitely the level we're looking at uh, as a very good opportunity on that as a long trade. Amazon is bouncing higher today. Notice how a couple days ago it sold off and then recaptured on the same day the 20 MA, and since that is a bullish sign. Anytime you break a level and then recapture it by the end of the day, it's showing you there, there's relative strength there, so sure enough, two days after that, it is going up. I still have a key level around the 410, 415 level. Again, I will post it to members if I do take it. Spiders are coming back in here, still right around the flat line. A lot of volume in this market over the last couple candles because of the Fed minutes, but really price action has almost gone nowhere. Right, you can see right here, sold off and then bounced back up. Now we're starting to come in just a little bit off the highs. Uh, market's trying to figure out the direction. One thing I will point out, and I think the market hasn't really grasped it yet, but the Fed is definitely starting to taper. I mean, they're going to continue to taper from everything I've, I've been reading. These Fed minutes, they were very hawkish, actually a little bit on the surprising side that some wanted to remove more. Some wanted to come out and state that they were going to end it all by the end of this year. I mean, there were some big statements there. And I think that has to be watched because this market's so used to the drug getting, you know, flowing into the veins that I don't really think it, it kind of is dawning on this market just yet. So we'll see. Right now, it doesn't seem to be impacting the markets, and the markets are still liking the stronger economic data. Fed did say they thought the economic data would, would get stronger and stronger this year as well, uh, which is why they were willing to taper and pull back. So we'll see. In any case, watch for a breakout above this level, guys. If you do get it, markets easily could go up very, very nicely. And in all fairness, it looks to me like it could even be setting up like that. So uh, as we come back up to that level, this market won't be able to hold down for much longer. So we'll watch and see again if uh, that does happen. I am definitely a little on the curious side here as the markets are inching back up towards those recent highs. All right, I would have thought we would have broken down below the 200 already if we were going to do it. And now with the markets floating up, we'll have to again monitor and uh, see where we go. All right. What else do I want to discuss here? Let's take a look at oil. Oil is seeing some nice downside action. Another 50 cents on the uh, USO to the downside. You are right into this double bottom level. We're just about there. There will be some good support there at around the 32.95 level. But for me personally, I'm probably not going to go long there. I'm going to wait for another flush to about the 32.50 level and then look for a bounce off 32.50. To me, 32.50 is the key level. All right, so this is your next key level, 3250, and I will be monitoring it very, very closely here. All right, spiders are inching up a little bit more, so I think we could be on the verge of a break here, guys, to the upside. Let me just bring it back up. We're getting back to that level. Let's see if they take this market through. And again, uh, you have to be able to read this market well, and right now, the fact that they couldn't take it through the 200 and they bounced it all the way back to the highs, to me, tells me that you're going to see some long price action here. All right, that's, that's the way I'm reading it anyways. So we'll see if it happens. But again, based on everything I'm seeing, I, I think it's most likely going to happen. All right. And again, I'm just putting out an alert here to watch. That's what we call an alert right there. And we'll see if the market can actually break through here. I'm tempted to pick a little bit up here and uh, see if we can't get a little bit of a push through those highs. But let's wait and see. I'm going to wait till it gets a little bit closer there and go from there. Uh, what else do we have here? Let me just see here. Um couple other good trades today. I mean, day trading was pretty solid across the board. SanDisk is having a great day. Some of the Chinese stocks are having good bounces. Uh, Biotechs, again, we talked about ABIO. Very nice bounce on ABIO today. Uh, JCPenney, let's talk about JCPenney. I'm actually bullish on JCPenney below 750. All right, JCPenney uh, basically affirmed guidance this morning. The stock is getting sold by about 8% to the downside. And most people would tell you or most people would say, you know, hey, what's going on here? Um, why, why is JPM or JCPenney, excuse me, JCP, why is it selling on them reaffirming guidance? And, you know, really what you're seeing here is JCPenney investors are a little skittish because they didn't get exact numbers from the company. And that's why you're seeing some selling. But as far as I'm concerned, if they're affirming guidance, I'm taking that at face value. And to me, there might even be undercutting the actual results. And I think they've turned a corner here. So I'm taking this as an on sale, a sale at JCPenney or on JCPenney stock. And I'm looking for entries in this range. All right, I'd like to see what it does tomorrow just to see if it continues to go down a little bit. But I honestly think that most likely we're going to see a turn back to the upside on this. Spiders are coming back in just a little bit here, guys. Uh, still watching. 
You know, still, the market seems to not really know which direction it wants to head yet. Although I still think, again, you know, with us in the upper ranges here, you got to give the benefit of the doubt to this weekend resistance level right up here. So we'll see again where it goes. Um, the fact that we didn't break there is kind of interesting. We didn't even touch it, and now we're coming back in. So you never know. Uh, gold is selling off on this news from the Federal Reserve. So gold is coming back in. Basically, the fact that the Fed wants to cut, markets are actually coming in here a little bit more. So that's getting kind of intriguing to me. All right, we'll see if we retest that 200 moving average. But again, gold taking a nice beating here. And as this goes lower, it gets all I care. All I care about is gold coming down into this range. All right, this is the level you're looking at on gold. Right around the 116 and a quarter, 116.50 area. Another dollar essentially tomorrow would be perfect on gold. And if we can get that, cha-ching, I'm going long gold, I think. All right, SPY is bouncing up again. I mean, it's all over the maps here off of these Fed minutes. Um, just kind of scanning through. There's got to be something else I wanted to mention here, but I think that's it. Definitely wanted to. We're seeing biotech, even large cap biotech, very strong today. BIIB up 16 and change. Uh, Celgene, Celgene's up three and change. So nice move on Celgene here. Although Celgene has been hammered down, it is coming back up just a little bit. Let me take a look at GILD up a dollar 46. Nice move there. And, uh, yeah, so the, for the most part, those the biotech sector is doing pretty well. Spiders are inching up again. I'm kind of staying with you guys on this video because I'm curious about the direction here of the SPY. You can see it's really stuck between this upper range and the 200. Upper range, 200. Which way are we going to break? My guess is we break one way or the other by the end of the day. I'd be very surprised if they, they keep it within this range. Jobs numbers on Friday, which is going to be the next big tell. So we'll be watching the jobs number again, uh, non-farm payrolls and unemployment report on Friday. What does it mean? Uh, is it too strong? It's too strong a number, I think, would be a negative. Um, a weaker number would be a slight positive. Uh, well, I think a neutral number would be the most positive. A too weak of a number would freak the markets out a little bit. But I don't think you're going to get that. After the jobs number this morning, the private sector number, you're going to most likely get a pretty solid uh jobs number as well just the question of is it just right kind of in that 200 plus thousand level or is it too hot over 250 i would say over 250 to 300 would be too hot under 175 would be too weak and anything in between that 250 to 175 area would be just right for this market the market would be fine with that and i think the market would like that spiders again are just chopping around here folks doing their thing uh, they're not breaking down. They're not breaking up. It really seems like a neutral thing. All right, I'm going to step aside, guys. There's only so long I can wait around here as we're waiting for this market to break one way or the other. Right now, it's anyone's game. The way you read this market before I get off here is 200 and blue trend line. Which way does it break? Just watch that. That will tell you everything. When it breaks, I do think it goes in that direction quite a bit. So watch it closely. Let's see what happens here. Take care, guys.